Hey guys, what's up? This is Casey. This is Coach Tom. And this is Shot Science Overtime number 204. Wow, 204. <laughs> wow, I'm always amazed at that. Yeah, well, I mean, we took a little bit of a break off. We did, um, we did. But we are back, and usually how these go, we have a topic that we talk about at the top of the show, so something that we think mm -hmm. is going to help you guys improve um, your game and maybe help you step it up so that you can take your play into the next level. And while we're doing that, you guys are going to send us questions or comments or whatever that you want us to talk about after that, and we will try to answer or talk about as many of those things as we can. Yeah. So if you could, please send us those questions, and also go tell your friends, family, whoever, to check us out. It really helps us kind of grow the team and yeah. you know keep doing these things, because right. you guys are the reason that we're doing this. Uh, if we were just here talking to each other, it would be pretty boring. <laughs> um, so... One of the reasons why we have kind of been away for a little while is because um, Coach Tom had to have open heart surgery. Yeah, yeah, we did. Well, not we, you. Okay. And, um, you know, it took a couple months, but Coach Tom is back, and he's been coaching uh, a team and everything, and we just wanted to make sure that we came back and everything was working well, exactly. right? Um, so, uh, we are going to be doing some more videos. We're going to hopefully be doing more live shows with you guys. Um, if you want us to come back and do these Sunday shows and you know, we just need your support to help kind of grow things back up again. Right. And you know, we've been on all of our other social media stuff pretty much since, you know, the entire time. So if you guys have been following us on Facebook or whatever, we have, we've been there. Um, but we really haven't been doing the face to face stuff for a while. So, right. um, hopefully you guys can <laughs> stick with us and help us spread the word and, you know, uh, we are on life two of the nine or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And I think we, we even posted a, a nice big scar picture of coach Tom over on the Facebook page a while back too. Yep. So if you want to check that out, go ahead or on Instagram. Why, why would you want to look at that for crying out loud? <laughs> um, so yes. Um, let's see. Uh, King Ofu 13 says, uh, King of you. Okay. Uh, I made this account when I was a kid and never changed the name. Sorry, I was coaching when I was in high school and never went to college. I want to go back, but I don't know where to start. Okay, we'll, we'll try to get in we'll that come in a minute. To that question. Okay, yeah. so let's jump in on our, our question that we were going to, or our, our topic that we were going to talk about. And we right. were going to talk about three topics that we, or three tips that we think are going to help improve yeah. your shooting. Yeah. So, number one is what? Uh, how to use your feet. Footwork. It, uh, footwork, yeah. And, you know, that's probably something that is. Uh, a question mark between different coaches. Some coaches will tell you to square up your feet. Uh, when they're telling you is they want your feet toe to toe to be facing the basket. We don't buy that because usually what happens is we have a tendency to shoot off our shoulder when we do that. However, when we stagger our feet, that and you can see my hand come around, it's more in line with my eye. I didn't move the hand. All I did was just rotate my feet. Yep. And so this, this is really important in our, our concern because this would be like me being over here and taking a pistol and trying to hit a target that's 25 or 30 yards away. Whereas if I have that pistol right in front of my shooting eye, then I'm probably going to do a better job of putting the ball where I want it to be or the pistol where I want it to be. Or just Exactly you know, right. And so, so if you're squaring up your feet, you're basically – doing that in the thought that you're you're even from both sides but you're not you have a side that you're going to shoot from right. that is your strong side typically and so you need to kind of favor that side exactly right yeah you, know, you don't throw a baseball just standing there throwing it you know with your feet squared up to the the, the plate or the mm -hmm. person you're throwing the ball to right. i mean you don't do that so you need to have a favor towards that side and so when people ask do you do you say square up or do you have that slight stagger stagger yeah, uh, because you know you're not shooting out of the middle of your chest. You're not shooting two-handed. You're shooting with and your strong side. And you're not shooting side. off your shoulder yep. either. That that's a key point. And you know the other thing too is that a lot of people want to rush their shot or how how do they get their shot faster and blah blah blah. That is the worst thing you can do. But where you can pick up extra time and efficiency is in your footwork. So exactly if right. you have really clean, smooth footwork that begins before you even start. Uh, to go up into your shot or catch the ball, right. that's, that's going to make up a lot of time. So you can rush your feet, but don't rush your form. Right. And one of the things that we teach most everybody is that when you are going to receive the ball or you think you're going to receive your ball, you're showing them your hands, number one, so there's a great target for them. 
And secondly, and this is real important, while the ball is in the air, you're already taking a little short step with the foot closest to the baseline. Yep. Now, what happens when we do that, that helps us with rhythm on the shot, number one. Number two, we're getting ready to shoot it before we've got it. Yep. And so that helps with uh, speed. If you watch guys like Curry and, and uh, um, Thompson, they're really great at that. They have their feet and they get the feet ready and they get that shot off really quick. So that we think that's real important. That's number one. Yeah. So uh, obviously there's a lot more nuance and stuff oh, yeah. to that too. Yeah. You can go watch other videos for that. But uh, that's kind of a quick thing that we think is super important that people always overlook. They think shooting is just mostly an upper body kind of situation. But yeah. your feet are the most important part in basketball regardless of what you're doing, whether it's defense, shooting, offense, passing, whatever. Exactly. You know, there's a point there that's real important too, a quick Casey. One. A quick one. Okay. The master over here. One of the things that we need to think about, too, is that uh, the, the power that we have on our shoulders and arms only represents about 20 to 25 percent of your power when you shoot it. Yep. Our core muscle group down through our legs uh, and down to our feet, that's where all the power is. And yep. oftentimes we'll have players who keep shooting the ball short and flat. And I will ask them this question, does that feel like you're underpowered? And their answer is always yes. Okay, this is what you need to do. That's called a two-part shot where you extend the legs and then there's a pause and it's almost imperceptible, but the ball is not on its way yet. And then it's just all arms doing all the work. And so... Well, that's part of number three. So we, maybe we should hold off on that uh, one. Well, yeah, we will. But the important thing there is that we get the legs into it. Okay. So, yeah, the other thing too about the legs too is that you have to... This is such a... See, this is what happens. We get on tangents because we're talking about these things. But right. um, when you're talking about the difference in the power and the finesse, the finesse should really come from the upper body. Like that's your, your that's homing the, system that's and a dialing guidance it system. in, the guidance system. Yeah. Your lower body is the power, the, power. The, yeah. the thrust where you get all of the, you know, the rocket fuel comes from there. You don't want to have uh, the upper body doing that and trying to be the accuracy yeah. part of the, sh of yeah. the shot. Um, okay. Next part, uh, number two. Uh, number two has to do with the gripping of the basketball. One of the things that we think is really important when we are teaching people is that imagine that the ball has a clock face on it. I can't, how do I get it up oh, there? Oh, it's there a we mirror go. image. It's going to screw Okay, up. so just there's a clock face on the, the basketball. And in that clock face, what we want to do is have these two fingers pretty much pointed towards 12 o'clock. And the thumb is more towards 10 o'clock, even a little more. And we want to take and spread the thumb and to the point where the ball is elevated off the palm of our hand. Several reasons why that's really important. Number one, we have better control of where the basketball is going to go. Yep. If we have a flat hand on the basketball, what happens is we don't guide it very well because it comes off these four fingers and there's no, con no real control right and left. Well, you can, you can see it too. Like if you yep. give me the ball... If, if we had the, I had it flat on my palm, I mean, it, it, I don't really have control with my fingertips, yeah. which are, you know, our, our, our hands are, that's, that's how we manipulate things. Uh, that's our feelers. Yeah. So, you know, if I'm trying to do something with my hand or with my palm and not my fingers, I don't have good control of exactly the ball. Exactly right. Exactly and, right. you know, and on the other end of the spectrum, I can't do it with my fingertips like this because I don't really have uh, very much coverage on the ball either. Right. But right. if I drop the ball down... And, you know, see, it's not on my palm, but it's covered by all my fingertips. I literally have 100% control of the ball. It's hold, not going anywhere. Hold the ball right there. One of the things that we talk about is what we call the one finger test, where you can take and slide your finger in underneath the basketball and the, and the palm. Yep. And if you've got that, then you're looking pretty good. If you go too much, not so good. If you don't have that little separation, then the ball oftentimes wants to come off the heel or the palm of your hand. Yeah, you don't want to shot put it and you don't nope. want to paint brush it. No, 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 no. So nope. uh, the grip is super important. And, and, you know, again, we go deeper into this stuff in some of our other videos, but that's one thing that we see a lot is people, they don't really spend enough time kind of figuring that out for themselves 
Uh, and you know, it, it can, it can give you a lot of control if you have the right grip on the ball. Exactly. And the, the last thing we'll say about the grip too, is that so many people worry about setting up and finding the, the seams with the tips of their fingers. And you know, they, they worry so much about catching the ball and then finding the seams, uh, before they get the shot off. If you can avoid doing that, you save yourself time and you also save yourself an extra step that makes your shot more complex. So if you right. can catch the ball and just shoot it without a seam or, you know, catch it and just shoot it. Uh, without getting in that groove, you will probably be a, a better shooter just because you're eliminating a step and it's also not necessary. Yes, yeah, not necessary. You know, basketballs today have a nice uh, surface to it that is, if they have a call for, or a name for that, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, and it doesn't make any difference where you grip the ball because it's round. Okay. Um, now something yeah, else. And well, some people do say, "Oh, the phys physics of the ball. If you get it with the seams, it's going to give it a, a, a better, uh, you know, uh, path towards the basket." Right. That, that's not true. I mean, it, it's such a minimal effect. Exactly. The ball is so big and weighs so much that you know it, it's not going at a speed where that's going to affect the flight of the ball. Exactly. So right. I would not be so worried about that. So if you can eliminate the whole get your fingers to the seams thing, which I know a lot of people like to build up it's not really important you know okay okay last thing no no not oh, yeah. okay this is this has to do with grip and that's the other hand casey okay all right one of the things that we teach everybody is you want to get the opposite what we call this the assist hand it's assisting the shot uh just because it's helping to control it now one of the things that happens is that when we shoot the basketball we don't get that hand off there quick enough what happens is this thumb over here tends to sweep through the ball, and when it does, the ball is going right or left. And so we want to keep that thumb out of there. And, and, and at the very least, that is another input into your shot that makes it more complicated yeah. and harder to replicate. Right. Well, the one thing that you'll find, too, is that when you get that nice grip, you control pretty much where the ball goes. But that assist hand wants to sweep through the ball uh, as you shoot it. And, uh, you know, we have people send us notes all the time. Coach, that's what I do. And, uh, or that's, that's what this NBA player does or whatever. Yeah, exactly. But, but it's like you're adding a complicated step to your shot that is not necessary. And so, you know, through all the experience that we've had, you know, we've seen, like, if you just learn how to let that hand fall away as you extend up, you know, some people go a little bit longer before it falls away, but it really should have zero influence on the path of the ball. Right. Because you want to have as few inputs into your shot release as you possibly can. Well, that and the fact that, you know, it, it, it really corrupts your shot often. Yeah, that's, what, that's, what, that's yeah. kind of what the bottom line of that yeah. is. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. So let's do number three mm -hmm. so we can get to people's questions. All right. Uh, and this has to do with the stroke and connecting uh, the different elements of your stroke together to make it effective. One of the things that we want to think about is where are you shooting the ball from? You know, if you're shooting free throws, uh, probably right at your shoulder uh, underneath your shooting eye probably is a good place to go with it. Okay, if you're shooting uh, uh, and you're being defended then and you're old enough and, and strong enough, we want to get the ball up so that is in front of our shooting eye. Uh, if we're going to take a set shot or a jump shot, either one, we want to have a higher set point. Now, the stroke is, is really important and kind of complex. One of the things that we want to think about is what we were just talking about is controlling where the ball goes. And what we want to think here is this. As soon as our elbow starts to slide out, can you demo that? All right. As soon as the elbow starts to slide out like that, you're going to create a flat shot, and it's usually short. We have to elevate the ball. Because you're not extending up, you're extending out instead. Yeah, and what happens is if you take and watch the really good shooters in either college or in, in the NBA, you will see that their arc is really, really high. And so it's almost impossible when you have that elbow out to get any arc or to be accurate. Okay, so we like to get the ball in in what we, is just kind of normal for human beings. And that is, if I just pull my arm up, we stand so that the arm is about uh, 10 degrees out of plumb. Plumb is straight up and down. And we don't want to get in there because what happens when we pull the, ball, the elbow in too far, this whole shoulder tightens up and the, game, and the shot's probably not going to be very effective. So we want to let it hang at about 10 degrees. Now, we also, 
want to have the ball so that it is in the, the arm is in the L position. So you get an L here, actually you get an L there and one that goes down the side. That's important because that's, as, that's how you want to get lined up for the shot, are the L positions. And you want to cock the wrist back uh, with the ball in it, of course. Uh, and that's really important. And, you know, the <clears throat> big thing about stroke is making sure that you connect all the parts and make them smooth transitions. If you are trying to, you know, shooting is a very complex kind of uh, series of events that has to yep. happen. Yep. Yep. And so you want to make sure that you are making it as smooth a transition between those parts as you possibly can. Yep. Because every time that you have a sticking point or a stopping point, <clears throat> your, your power just gets annihilated. You, right. you lose it. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of times people talk about two shot or two motion shot or one motion shot. I mean, that that's really just kind of more more information than it needs to be. It's really like you have these sticking points yep. and people that go up and jump and then they hang and then they release. That's really just a lack of connectivity, really. And you want to make it so that each motion of your shot transitions smoothly into the next. Right. And we call it connectivity. Right. Um, but, you know, the, the jerkiness or the, the kind of sticking points are what you want to avoid. Right. And, and that's something that affects a lot of young players. You know, these are elements that we think are really important to make people uh, really good shooters. And we have a track record uh, that goes back probably 20 plus years mm -hmm. of people that we teach who uh, are able to develop really good strokes. we got one guy who is uh, getting ready to graduate from high school. He's about 6'4", six, 6'5". He's been playing in the middle, but he can shoot it. He spent so much time just developing that shot, and he's working on his ball skills now so that when he goes off to college, maybe he'll be able to play maybe a, a, a three position, three, four. Yeah, well, I mean, okay. that's one of the things that we always talk about, too, yeah. is that the more versatile and well-rounded you are as a player, the yep. more value you add as a player to a team. So, exactly. you know, you don't want to be just, I mean, it's not like it was 40 years ago where Ooh. you want to just focus on one position so much, you know, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm a post player 40. Yeah. I I'm, know. I I'm, was, a, I'm a post player. Yeah. I'm a, I, well, I mean, it, it, it was even true when I was a kid yeah. and stuff too, but you know, uh, you focus on, I'm a point guard, I'm a post player, whatever. Now you want to be so well-rounded that you can do everything, you know, yeah. and you can see that in, in a lot of the top players. I mean, LeBron, he can do basically everything. Yeah. Uh, in college, you can see Zion. He's basically can do most everything. Yeah. Um, so you want to be that kind of player because you can play any position. You can yeah. do anything, and the coach can put you in at any time to fill any situation. Yeah, um, exactly. And uh, if you're just a role <clears throat> player, I mean, you might just end up as a role or yeah. not. And your role might not be on the team. Well, your role might be that you're parked on the bench a whole bunch because yeah. you haven't got skill development. Okay. Okay, before we go on, Hurry. Uh, tell them where they can find this information. Uh, well, I mean, if you guys want more information on that, you can always go to our videos on YouTube. We have a right. whole bunch of stuff. We're also planning on doing a bunch more new videos and updating stuff. Um, we have our studio that we have that's set up and, you know, we just need to get in there. And since coach Tom is doing his recovery, we're yeah. kind of ready to get that going. We're ready so, to go. Um, uh, we're going to do that. And, uh, you can also go to shotscience.com and check out everything there. If you guys want to help support us a little bit too, you can always order t-shirts. You can go and order the training gear there. We have the vertical jump, uh, box, yep. which is, uh, you know, it's a box full of all of our training gear for our vertical jump program. Um, and also, if you guys want to do a super chat here today, we will make sure that we answer any of those people that do the super chat. Right. Um, and all of that really just helps support <clears throat> what we're doing. Um, and if you guys want us to stick around, I mean, we gotta we gotta be able to uh, you know fund some of the stuff that we're doing, and yeah. that really helps us a lot. And we also appreciate seeing you guys wearing the shirts and sending us the pictures on, and tagging us on Instagram and all that. Um, so please, uh, if if that sounds like a cool thing to you, please go ahead and do that. You bet. Um, you bet. But yeah. Super chat. We will definitely answer every single one of those if we if we get any of that. All right. Um, okay. So let's <laughs> close down our topic for today, and we're going to jump into answering your guys' questions. If you guys have questions, please get them in now uh, because we're going to try to answer as many as we can. But usually towards the end, we have to cut it off at some yeah, point. Yeah, so right. uh, get them in now, and please tell your friends and family to check us out because it really helps grow the team. All right. Let's jump in. We'll go back up to the top here a little bit. Um. Wipe Wayu Poo Fu says, in your honest opinion, do you want a shooter or a kid that plays tough defense? I know anyone would want both. I see sometimes that there are three to four great shooters on a team and defense is secondary. You know, it's interesting. I was reading an article even this morning that we're talking about 
players fitting in, into uh, an offense or into a team. And <clears throat> there are players who are really pretty good shooters, and there are other players who not, but they're great defenders. And so, uh, or uh, they have some other quality about them that makes them worthy of being on the floor. And so I, I wouldn't say the most, well, you stop and think about this. The most important thing in basketball really is shooting the basketball. And otherwise they wouldn't keep score. And so you want to be able to play uh, and shoot the ball, but maybe not all guys can. I've had over the years a number of guys who were just tough as nails on defense. Yeah. And we just love those guys because they get out and just harass the offense uh, and make it difficult, and other guys could pick up some of the other roles. And so uh, some guys are, are natural rebounders. I mean, you take a look at the basketball, that's how it is. I, there's, a, there's one local team that I'm kind of familiar with, uh, and they have about five or six guys who can shoot the ball, but they're not really very big. Uh, and they do a fair job of rebounding, but, boy, they do a great job of shooting the basketball. What? And, now, and there's another team, in fact, several teams that kind of fit into this mold. And that mold is this. They are really strong on the boards, but they can't shoot from the outside. And so, and, you know, what happens is that when fame teams realize that you can't shoot, then they start to take and, and get into zone defenses really tight, and they just let you fire away, and they get all the balls. Okay, so it's real important that there are different personalities, different body types, and all of that kind of thing that are really important to your team being successful. Yeah, I mean, people always ask, do you want this player over this player? Yeah. It's, it's hard to say yeah. because, you know, basketball is not a one-dimensional sport. There, right. there is so many aspects to it. Of course, somebody that plays crazy tough, intense defense is going to be very desirable. Isn't, but that, isn't that who Zion is? Well, he's he's a monster anywhere you put him on the floor. But I mean, he does everything else too. Yeah. But the thing is, is that I mean, you want to be able to not have that person be a liability on offense either. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's hard to say as a as a coach like what you want. What you want is a player that can do everything. Yeah. And you know, maybe they're not the greatest at everything, but if they can do everything, that's a very valuable person. Sure. And. Uh, one of the biggest things that you want to have is a good attitude, somebody that just has leadership and puts it all on the floor, hustle, all that stuff. Those are super important. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when people ask us, what would you, what do you want over the other? I mean, I like want you both said, of them. I want all of them. Like you said, I mean, yeah, you want somebody that plays defense like that, but if they can't score, I mean, if you're not putting points on the board, you're not going to win. And, okay. And so you that, keep other people from yeah. putting points on the board, you and know, that's important. You too. know what I forgot to do? And it's been such a long time. I forgot to ask our question of you guys. Yeah. Um, so every time that we do these shows, we always have a question of the day for you guys. And that question is, where in the world are you guys from? Yes, exactly. And I totally forgot about that night. And I also forgot that I'm supposed to let you ask that. But <laughs> here, go ahead and ask. Let us know where you're located in the world. Yeah. Okay. So we are in Santa Cruz, California. Uh, we are kind of south of San Francisco, but we want to know where you guys are from. Yeah, are you from, exactly. That's always uh, fun to hear. Yeah. Are you from Indiana? Are you from Jakarta? Are you from Egypt? Are you from England? Lithuania. Uh, Lithuania. <laughs> we want to know where you guys are from. So yeah. let us know in the comments and we will uh, try to shout out people that, that tell us. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, King of You 13 says, I'm 24 and don't want to start with a recreational league. Okay, what do you want to start with? Um, That's not a bad place to start. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I say that is this, is that if you are taking the time uh, to work on your skills away from uh, uh, the team setting, that gives you a chance to go in and probably play against players that are not going to be tough uh, for you to play against and and that helps you in this regard is that if you want to take and work on your step back or you make that drive and you step back and that player is probably not uh, developed sufficiently that they can take it away from you or and so this helps you develop uh, and work on your skills and moves yeah and, and if, shooting for that matter and if you're 24 I mean you're you're, a you're little, still a kid yeah but you're also a little limited in what you can do because yeah. I mean there's not other than, you know, adult leagues, which are rec leagues, I yeah. mean, that's kind of what you, you got ahead of you unless yeah. you want to go play pickup games and things like that, yeah. which is fine. I mean, it's kind of comes down to what it, what are your goals and what do you want to get out of it? Yeah, exactly. Um, and some rec leagues are better than others. Some are yeah. not so great. Yes. So you got to kind of 
uh, balance and figure that out. Okay, we got Momar and Daye from Senegal. We have King of U13 from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. All right. Um, <clears throat> Reggie Brock from Kentucky. God Sean from Baltimore, Maryland. Um, Taha Midraha. I hail from the Bronx, NYC. Uh, DMN Worldwide. I'm from Orlando, Florida, but I live in Daytona Beach. All right. Uh, Trevor New Yin, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Arlen BB, Ohio. Philip Cohn, our buddy from Germany. All right. Um, let's see. Mohammed Ihab, I'm from Egypt. You actually got it. That was one that we said. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, Yu Fu from San Diego. Thank you for the thoughtful response. I look forward to future videos. Thanks. Um, okay, so if you have more of those, we'll, we'll shout some of those people out too. Let's go back up here. Let's see. Uh... DMN Worldwide says, which one is better, having your feet towards the hoop or at a slant? Actually, we, go, ahead. Let me go ahead. Short, short. Actually, we like to have you turn your uh, the toe staggered. of the shooting foot. They're staggered uh, so that they're about toe to the, the uh, instep of the other foot. And for the, if I'm a righty, I've got my, uh, my shooting foot forward, and I turn it just a little bit toward the left. The other foot steps back so that the toe is just about even with the instep and shoulder width is really good. Yeah, you emphasize your shooting side. Yeah. Okay, uh, our buddy Den V Star says, hello guys, so glad to see you. It's been a while, I hope you're doing good. We're good, yeah. we're good. Good to see you too, hope you're doing good. Yeah. Uh, Taha says, hi coach, how do you find your rhythm in your shot? There seems to be a disconnect between my legs and upper body. I'm trying to learn how to shoot, but I keep airballing because of this. Okay, you know, that's, that's a real interesting question. People, and Casey kind of alluded this to this a while ago, when people shoot the basketball, they have a tendency sometimes to make that a two-part shot. Yep. And the first part typically is you extend your legs and there's a, almost a pause that you can't even be per, uh, perceptive of, and then the arms go. And so what happens is that you lose all that power that comes from the lower legs. And then what you really want to do is get into a one-part shot where there is never a hesitation. The legs come up and the arms are already moving. That's when you pick up the power from the lower legs and you're able to do several things with it. Number one, you're able to get a nice arc with that if you're thinking about doing that and you should be thinking about doing that. Yep. Uh, and the other thing is that the power will be there. And you know, it's interesting, we often use this description when we're talking to students. If we drop our, our, our legs about three inches, you can't imagine how, how much power you have when you shoot the basketball. And so uh, that's really what I would say. Get to a one-part shot, and it takes a while. You need to use the form shooting drill, yep. s slow everything down, break everything back down, and really <laughs> work on mindfully getting that worked into your shooting mechanics. You can't just go out there, game speed, and hope to get it yeah. to all work out. You yeah. have to get it all really slowed down, and work on smoothing out that, that hitch that yeah, you have. Exactly right. And, and you know, the thing that's really interesting is, is we ask players, does that feel underpowered when they shoot one that's short and flat? Well, yeah. Well, that's a signal to you that you are not getting your legs into it because when you get your legs into it and you shoot it, that thing is going to be effortless. Yep. Okay, this one is from... Mm -hmm. Duke fan, who says, what would you prefer on your team, a player with pure athleticism and no shooting or a player with all shot skill and no athleticism? Uh, yeah, that's a tough question. You know, there are a lot of guys who can be really athletic but don't shoot the ball very well because, number one, maybe they've never been instructed very well. I, For me – Well, a lot of it I, is they, they get by with they, athleticism. Exactly. And the thing that's real important there, maybe they get to the basket – uh, and that kind of thing, so, which makes them really valuable. But the thing that is real important is uh, you've got people who can shoot. We talked about this a while ago. And, and most teams, a lot of teams, will have several uh, different grades of players. Grades of players meaning this. That guy can shoot it. This one over here, he's so tough on defense. He lo I love that guy. This guy hits the boards like a crazy man. And so all of these little elements and abilities kind of bring a team together. And, you know, sometimes, you, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, you can have a team of people who can shoot the ball pretty good, but they're all very short, and so they don't have uh, the ability to get in and get to the boards. Okay, I think that, you know, 
people ask you these questions that are very general. It's hard yeah. to, to say one way or the other because yeah. you can find examples of people on either end of the spectrum that are able to deliver, you yes. know. Yes. And, you know, when people say about, you know, uh, maybe less athleticism and more skill, I kind of think about somebody like Larry Bird. Yeah. But even though I say that, but Larry Bird also was an extremely athletic person above average for somebody that was six foot nine, you yeah, know, yeah. as a six foot nine individual in the regular world, he is an elite athlete. It's just like compared to somebody like Dr. J or something like that, right. like that he doesn't have the athleticism that Dr. J had, but you know, Larry Bird was able to go out there and be like the dominant player of his time right. by having the, the skill level that was just way out of the league of right. everybody else, you know? And so I mean, you can find people that kind of break the mold. So it's hard to answer that. What what you should really get down to is you want to have the highest skill level you can. And you can also work on your athleticism. You don't have to just be satisfied with what you are naturally given. Sure. You can develop athleticism, too. So it's it's you ask those questions and they're interesting, but it's yeah. also it's not as clear cut. Yeah. Let's see. Um. Arlen BB says, what should I do if I'm a right-handed shooter? I keep miss, missing left all the time. So that oh, means that when you're shooting, the ball is going off the left side of the rim. Uh, well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one would be that your, the line of your shot is going that direction and you're finishing off the fingers here. Oftentimes when our, our arm goes to the left side and we're right-hander, the ball comes off these last three fingers. Yep. Okay, and so that's gonna make the thing be errant. The other thing, as we talked about a while ago, was the thumb, where you've taken this thumb rakes through the basketball at the moment that you're releasing the basketball. This hand will come off of the basketball so that this hand is doing all the shooting in itself. Yeah, so what you're doing basically, too, is you're telling <clears> us <throat> a diagnostic point of your shooting. Yeah. Um, and what is happening is that diagnostically you're missing to the left, so that means that you're probably either not finishing towards the basket or your 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 release is, is coming off of your other fingers or you're having the influence of your other hand. Yeah. So that's, you need that's to really it. you need to really kind of figure out what's going on there. And you can do that either by just slowing down and doing the form shooting stuff yeah. or videotaping or not yeah, filming yourself shooting. Um, and you know you can film slow mo on your phones typically these days too and you can kind of see what's going on. Yeah. So, uh, you know, get out there and, and maybe film yourself doing that in slow-mo and see how the ball is coming off, how you're finishing towards the rim, or have somebody watch you do it, too. Exactly. That thumb can be a real monster for us. Yep. So check that out for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, Philip Cohn says, are there any tips on how to learn shooting with your weak hand, or is it just hard work? Okay. Hold on. Let me let me get in this okay. first. All right. When it comes to shooting with your opposite hand, you really should only do that within about a four foot distance from the basket. Well, um, yeah, um, yeah. Because what happens is is that if you are if you're trying to learn how to shoot ambidextrously any further away from the basket, you're basically taking away time that could be spent on developing your strong hand. Right. And uh, you don't want to be mediocre at shooting with both hands when you could be fantastic shooting with your one hand. Um, and the reason that, that we say that, that inside of four or five feet or so that you want to be ambidextrous is because you will find that if you're inside, you uh, might have to finish uh, with a player up against you on your body between you and the basket or the basket is blocking your your kind of better sh perspective of, of getting the shot off or whatever. So that that's good to have ambidextrous abilities inside of the basket. Absolutely. Um, but when you step away, you want to be a great shooter with your strong hand. And if you're having problems getting your shot off, that's a different situation where you should really work on creating space and making a good shooting uh, opportunity instead of trying to be able to shoot with your right or left hand. Yeah. It, it makes no sense in in really developing your offhand for perimeter shots. Right. One of our students... Mid-range um, or long. Uh, is she, she does a lot of stuff with her left hand, and she shoots the basketball with her right hand, but when she shoots, she shoots with both hands. And so what is long and short. And so now she's learning to shoot the ball with one hand and becoming 
really effective with that. Now, Philip, if you're talking about how to learn how to shoot with your offhand in on the interior, in the in, you know in the post or yep, whatever, absolutely. Then yes, but it, you know you're asking if there are any tips to learn that. There, the only tip is is that you do it exactly the same way as you do your strong hand. It just usually takes more effort and kind of. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have to work harder at it because that's your wonky side. And it's, well, it takes a little more time to develop it. Well, there's another thought that comes in there, too. We instruct all of our students to always on the layups or those little short shots to use the backboard. One of the toughest shots in basketball, in my opinion, is that little uh, shot that's about four to six feet away. Uh, and there's no backboard just trying to put it in the basket. I mean, that's a tough shot. Yep. Um, OK, let's see here. This one is from, I just saw it at where to go, uh, Alvin Bong Hui Min, who says, greetings from Malaysia. What's up, Alvin? All right, all right. Coach, just one question. I shot a lot better off the step back than catch and shoot, and I just can't figure out why. Could it be because my alignment is better off the step back than just standing still? Hmm. I think that, you know, it's hard for us to know without seeing your shot, but yeah. it might be because you are doing the footwork to step back, and that's helping you generate your rhythm. Um, be, and yeah. when you're doing the catch and shoot, maybe you haven't developed your rhythm, but, uh, we will tell you that you should go watch our videos on this stuff too, is right. that even when you're doing catch and shoot, you should never just catch it flat footed. Um, you should always be stepping into your shot. You should always be developing that rhythm with your feet before you even catch the ball. A lot of times you'll see a lot, you know, in the NBA or whatever that people will catch the ball and they'll be flat footed or they'll be in their, the, you know, the position designated to them to catch the ball or whatever. And they'll go into their shot. Typically when they do that, they have to do the dip of the ball. That is a waste of time. It's an extra move. It's a lack of efficiency and you can eliminate it completely with your footwork. And you also create a little bit more space and separation when you do that. And so my guess would be that you're better uh, kind of rhythmically primed when you're doing the step back than when you're doing just the catch and shoot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the things that we would recommend to is go to our YouTube channel and, and find that information there uh, on shooting and the footwork. That, that'll really help you a bunch. Kyle in says, I miss you, Coach Tom. Uh, all right. <laughs> With a cry face. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, Coach Tom. Well, is I'm glad right to here. be here. Yeah. In, in all regards. Um, let's see. This is from Parrish. He says, What is your take on shooting arc? While it's true that a higher arc increases the area of the rim, it also increases total distance. That's true. What is your reference angle? 45 degrees or 55 degrees? You know, it's interesting. Um, over the years, I've read different shooting coaches, uh, you know, around the country and whatnot, and it varies. We take and want to have the ball about 45 degrees. Oftentimes, it's really hard for you to be exact, and so maybe it's 55. Some coaches think that you should have 55. Uh, or even maybe 57. But what happens is that when you shoot the ball with more arc, it begins to take on what we call the bell arc, where the ball, uh, the, sh the ball, where's my fingers? Here we go. Where the, the thing goes up and the arc looks like this. It's just a real sharp little up and down. When we let it flatten out just a little bit more to 45, we find that we, that works best for our students anyway. And it also depends a lot on your body and your ergonomics. Pe yeah. Somebody that is five foot five sh is not going to be shooting with the same kind of arc or release necessarily as somebody that's seven feet tall, because you know the angle of release is going to be different. Well, um, and, and where you're located relative to the basket. Yeah. If you're in closer, then maybe you're going to shoot with a little bit more arc than you might. The the idea of the the basket being bigger is really important, but. There's a couple of elements, and I'm just going to throw this in real quick, and we'll address it some other time. But one of the elements that's really important is that when you shoot a basketball that has a nice arc and it runs into the rim, it will have a tendency want to want to bound upward. And you may think, well, what difference does that make? Because that ball still has a chance to go in. Balls that go in in a flat arc usually result in a long rebound. And the thing that's really important, uh, some other time we'll talk about how you create that soft shot. Yeah, well, I mean, we talked about it in our videos and stuff, too. And you can yeah. go watch. I mean, we have a video that explains the arc, exactly what we're talking about. Right. You know, the other thing, too, is that you should not be so tied up with the specific numbers so much as the concept itself. You don't want to have a flat release. 
you want to have a, a release that is elevating and extends the ball up into a higher arc. You, I mean, you don't need to worry so much about, okay, is my is my shoot, shooting arm uh, 55 degrees? Yeah. Uh, let me let me take a picture of it. I'm going to pull out the protractor and make. You don't need to do that. No, you don't. Um, and a lot of it is a little bit of trial and error and making sure that you're you're consistently getting the same kind of uh, fly to the ball and that it's effective in terms of your accuracy. Right. So, you know, some people get so tied up in the numbers and it's like, you know, okay, that's a, that's a general area that you want it to be in, but let's not get so tied up to that. Yep. Okay. Um, and yes, there are studies that have kind of looked at that too. So you can look at that as well. Um, okay. The internal external says, I've been practicing for months and I still can't shoot straight. Even when I shoot with one hand, my ball does always spin and goes, doesn't, uh, maybe that was a misspelling, but with one hand, my ball does always spin and goes perfectly straight. Uh, okay. So, I mean, if you're having problems with your shot and you've been working on it and working on it, maybe you need to break it down even further, start doing the form shooting drill and really work on each element of your shot. Right. If your shot is going left or right, there's a reason. If your shot is short, there's a reason. If your shot is, you know, uh, underpowered, there's a reason. Right. So you need to really break that down and figure out what is going on. And then you put all the pieces together, work on that. Then you go up to game speed, game intensity, and then you'll really start to see a difference in that. Yeah, but absolutely. also, don't keep repeating the same issue over and over. If you have an issue, identif fix it. Fix identify it, yeah. it and fix it. Yeah. Otherwise, you're not gonna you're not gonna just magically make it better. Uh, let, let's see. Uh, you gotta you know, you gotta videotape it or take a picture of it, and you can kind of calculate that right. uh, by looking at the angle of the release, release off your hand. Right. Okay, so we're just gonna take a couple more questions here. So let's do a little lightning round. How about that? All right. Um, let's see. Bulldogs is saying so many vertical jump training programs. What's the issue you have with other programs and why is yours safe and effective? Okay. Well, the reason that we like our program is because it was developed by my brother Chase and he is a clinical uh, physiologist and he has all the degrees and he's worked with, you know, people at all levels and up into the pro level type stuff. Um, and he also designed it age specific, mostly for younger people. A lot of the stuff that you go and you you see in these other jump programs, they kind of jump right into doing these heavy strength focused, uh, power focused uh, programs. When ours kind of progressively builds on itself and focuses a lot on stability, mobility, balance, and uh, and, and that kind of stuff first, the flexibility, and then we kind of start adding some of the strength and power stuff uh, a little bit later. And it's also mostly body weight with a few, you know, kind of things that you can add on. Right. So that's why we're kind of partial to that. And it's also, <laughs> it's also, it's about developing athleticism with our program, not just vertical jump. So, right. it, you know, you'll be able to run, jump, laterally move, uh, you know, all the different parts of athleticism that are important. Uh, let's see. Uh, Here's a couple here. Uh, let's see. Didn't we say some of these? Let's see. I think that's probably about where El Centro. Okay, here, here's Christopher who says, Hi, greetings from Croatia. Is consistent repetition the only way to ingrain your new shooting form and how to make it easier to not fall back into old shooting form? Consistent repetition. Exactly. Consistently addressing it. Yep. Exactly. And mentally following what it is that you're doing. Oftentimes we become mindless because we're just throwing the ball up there. What you do, you want to make sure that you're being very comprehensive and understanding and making sure that all those important elements are taken care of every time you shoot. And pretty soon they become a matter of muscle memory because we don't, our muscle memory on new stuff usually is not established and so we easily fall back into old patterns. As soon as you establish the, uh, the muscle memory, you don't have to think about it anymore. That's who you are, and, and the stroke will improve a whole bunch. Alvin says he's from Malaysia. One day fly to the USA. Uh, Goyo Marquez says El Centro, California. Um, okay, and this is one of the last questions we're going to do. Mohammed Ihab says a question just popped to me, popped up to me. In is 
once we are confident enough in our shooting, how can we practice for dribbling skills to use in gameplay? What are the essentials? Oh. I, that is a very large question. I would yeah, say it is. It go is. look at our videos. We have so many things on ball handling and dribbling and dribble attacks and things like that. But a lot of it comes down to developing uh, a few for your tool toolbox that you yeah. can use at any time. And then a... Uh, uh, you know, one that you can that you can use that looks like the other one. Yeah. Um, so I would say go look at those and check that out. Um, Bulldog says, "Good to see you, Tom." All right, good to see you too. I wish I could see you. Yeah. Um, Wapfu says, uh, "Do me a favor and please leave this video up. Great tips and advice. We will." Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna end it right there for you guys. Please. Uh, you know, just say hi. We want to know how you guys are doing. Yep. Uh, let us know where you guys are from the world. Let's do one more question where we ask right, people right. uh, something. What is one thing about your shooting that you need to work on today? So yep. let us know one thing about yep. your shooting that you need to work on. We want to know. Leave that in the comments. If you guys could, please go to shotscience.com. Uh, get yourself a shirt or get yourself uh, a vertical jump box. Uh, check out some of the stuff we have going on at shotscience.com, and we will be back with other videos here very soon. So Real soon. Yep. Thank you guys for being here. All right. See Thanks, you again guys. Next time. Bye.